ծանցության եւ ծանր բահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույմ վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today for this edition of Armenian Christianity Today. Let us begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's graduation time. Yes, it's June already, and people are graduating. It's, well, even if they're not graduating, it's a fun time to talk about graduation, right? Because it's so much in the air, we're accustomed to it. There's like this usual summer break. And even if you're not taking a summer break, you know that it's still graduation time in June. So I want to talk about graduation, but first and foremost, I want to congratulate all of you who are graduating. Everyone who is in the class of 2013, whether you're a kindergartner, whether you're graduating from elementary school, junior high, high school, college, Whatever you're graduating from, congratulations. Very special time for you. I want to share with you some ideas about graduation that you might not hear at the usual fair when you get up and you hear people talking about the different things. They tell you, be this, do this, and you know, we are the first generation that did this. You know, those are all nice things that people tell you, but I'd like to share with you some thoughts that Christ gives us, that Christ tells us that this is the way of graduation, namely in acquiring, are you ready for this word? Wisdom. Hmm. Wisdom. Now that's an interesting idea. So when we go to school, we learn a lot of things, a lot of concepts. By things, you know, that we, we learn this is a book. I mean, at some point we have to figure out that, the, you know, the, a book is made up of a, a, a hard cover and some pages in between with some writing, and we start developing ideas based on what we learn. So we learn about books, and then we start learning about writing, about the letters that make up sentences, sentences that make up paragraphs, paragraphs make up chapters, and chapters the book. And so too with a lot of other things. An engineer may start learning different calculations that will hold up a bridge. Somebody who is in law will start learning about the different unique laws, the natural laws that support the rest of the legal system. Of course, when you get into some of the sciences, all of science is based on learning the basics and then you go further. Well, it's no different for Christ. It's no different for the Christian. You have to learn the very basics to expand on those and find the wisdom that God calls us to find. And I want to take, for instance, this little passage that comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. I want to use this as the base of today's talk. It comes from the Sermon on the Mount. As you know, the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew chapter 5 through, uh, through uh, 7. This is the, one of the final words here. He says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine, Jesus is talking, and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Who is a wise man? One who has wisdom. So if you listen to Jesus' words, you are like a wise man who builds his house on rock. That's interesting. What is he talking about here? Building on rock. Isn't a wise man one who makes a lot of money? Isn't a wise man one who drives nice cars and has a few houses and has excess mortgages and has an ulcer and... No, 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 no. We know what I'm talking about. Certainly over here, Jesus makes the point. He says, it is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. If you listen to Jesus' words, you're like a wise man because the foundation is strong. It's just like every other thing that you learn. It's like those first elementary formulas that you learn to understand how a bridge will become a suspension bridge. It's like learning the first laws that will eventually allow you to pass that bar exam. It's like learning those first 
uh, scientific notations so that you'll be able to write the complexities, musical notations, whatever it may be. You have to start someplace. What is Jesus saying? He's saying the person who listens to me, who hears my words, is like the wise man who puts in the solid foundation. Now, what kind of foundation do you want? Well, of course, you want a rock foundation. You want it solid. You don't want sand. You don't want sand. What happens if you build something on sand? Well, if you've ever, ever gone to the beach, you know what happens, right? You build a sand castle, what happens? The wave comes and it blows it away. That's what Jesus is saying. Listen to what I've instructed you, he said. And you'd be like the wise man who's built his house on rock. Now he continues. He says, and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Wisdom. It's a very important idea. Now, wisdom has many dimensions, and we're not going to talk about all the different ideas about wisdom, but suffice it to say that wisdom comes from within. It comes with a solid foundation. When your foundation is Christ, you can build that, that, uh, that life for yourself that nothing can touch. You see, today when you celebrate your graduation, whether, like I said, kindergarten, elementary school, junior high, high school, graduating from college, there's one thing for certain. There's one thing that you will, if you don't know it right now, you will find out the minute you walk away from that graduation ceremony. And that is that you haven't stopped learning. There's always new things to learn. There's always so many beautiful things around you. This is why I've shared this with you in the past. It always amazes me when people come say, I don't believe in God. And you say, well, why? You know, they're entitled to their opinion. I don't believe it because there's no evidence. You mean you know everything? You mean you've seen out there beyond the stars and you know that there is no evidence? Even Albert Einstein looked at the mysteries of the universe and knew that there had to be some kind of order to it. Granted, he didn't talk about a personal God, but there was the idea of something greater, greater than himself, that God that is out there, that is within us, that is without us. And so, too, when you start learning things, you've got to realize that there's no end to learning. I mean, people with gray hair will always learn. And the minute you stop learning, the minute you stop learning, what happens? You die. Because that's the only way you can stop learning is when, you, when you're out of breath, when you're out of life. As long as you live, you will be learning and you will be building. You see, you and I, we're building our lives. We're building on a foundation. Whether it's the engineer who builds on the foundation of his, uh, of his principles and uh, mathematics, whether it's the lawyer who builds his life and his reputation on the legal laws and natural laws that he learns, whether it is the doctor out there who learns the basic formulas of, of chemistry and understands that these pills will react in this way. Whatever it may be, we build on what we've learned. Christ tells us, build your life on the wisdom that I have shared with you. Now you say, well, what is that wisdom? It's very easy. It's not anything. It's not brain surgery. In fact, it should come very natural. It's loving. Build it on that love. That's what Christ teaches. He says, those of you who, have, who listen to my words and hear them are like the wise man who builds his house on the rock. Well, what are, what are his words? Love one another. Take care of one another. Understand one another. Have compassion for one another. Reach out for one another. And these are things that make us members of the human race and in that humanity, we are able to touch the godly. Each of us is called to our life, to a graduation ceremony that we find out at the end of life. But in the meantime, we are building. We are building small little steps from our kindergarten to our elementary school, to our junior high, to our high school, to our college. 
but the degrees come in different ways. It's not just the paper, it's not the diploma, it's the degrees of understanding that we have cared, we have loved, we have had compassion in our heart. That's the message that Christ gives to us. It's the message that keeps you rock solid on a solid foundation and will not waver. When you have love, you can do everything. That's not just my words. <laughs> Those are words that cannot lie. They are words spoken to us by our Lord, by our God. Love one another. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of our graduates, the class of 2013. I want to congratulate all the parents, all the family members. I know it takes a lot. It takes a lot to give your child that education. I want to congratulate those of you who are stepping, using these as stepping stones. Perhaps you didn't graduate, but you're moving forward. In any case, remember the bottom layer always has to be the love of Christ, the love that he's put in our, in our hearts, the words of Christ and Christ. May God bless you all. Congratulations, class of 2013. And in all things, give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.